Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, this is uh, Hamid Hassan, Assistant Professor, International Institute of Islamic Economics, International Islamic University, Islamabad, Pakistan. <clears throat> I am going to present the chronic model of circulation of wealth and its implication for SDGs. I am thankful to the organizers of this symposium on Islamic banking, Islamic economics, finance and banking for inviting me for this lecture. And I am thankful to the Namek Kamal University, Turkey for this invitation. So my contents of the presentation are what is the perspective of wealth in the Quran? Because the model deals with wealth, circulation of wealth, so it is important to uh, to clarify the concept of wealth in the Quran. And what are the major economic, social and environmental problems? How did we try to solve them? Why did they fail? Will achieving the SDGs solve these problems? And how will we achieve the SDGs and beyond? How does the chronic model of circulation of wealth solve them? And at the end, what are the approaches or strategies to implement the Quranic model of circulation of wealth? So let us uh, begin with the perspective of uh, Quran on wealth. <clears throat> While uh, economics uh, has progressed substantially over the years, Yet some of the grave economic problems have remained exist that impacted a great proportion of the population. Some of the major concerns are uh, poverty, extreme inequality, hunger, environmental degradation, and financial instability. The United Nations has recognized these concerns and has included them in the uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals SDGs. Most of these problems emanate from the, the misuse and mismanagement of natural and financial resources. And uh, an equitable distribution of these resources help reduce, if not er eradicate, these problems. The Holy Quran, the book of guidance, wisdom, and truth for all human beings without temporal and spatial limitations provides guidelines and principles to address the above mentioned economic problems in a holistic manner. <clears throat> the Quran has more than 1000 verses directly or indirectly related to economic matters. The essence of this teaching is to protect and flourish society by transforming the individuals with baser motives and selfish actions to the individuals with other regarding and social preferences. The vision 2030 of the United Nations to transform our world through 17 SDGs could not be achieved unless we transform individuals, enhance the family and the society and ultimately the whole system. The Quran focuses on moral foundation of economic system that is missing in these standard economic theories. Wealth is necessary to sustain and maintain a family, as mentioned in the uh, Surah 4, verse 5. La tu'tu sufaha amwalakum allati jala Allahu lakum qiyaman warzuquhum fiha waksuhum waqulu lahum qawlam ma'rufa and do not give the weak-minded your property which Allah has made a means of sustenance for you but do you provide for them with it and clothe them and speak to them the words of appropriate kindness. However, this, this role is instrumental rather than intrinsic. So it is a medium, not the objective. The basic purpose of teaching the Quran on wealth is to strengthen the moral fabric of society, which in turn may affect the economy. So, first of all, 
we should understand the concept and purpose of wealth in Quran. Clearly, the first and foremost purpose of wealth in Quran is giving it in charity, and hence it becomes trial, since people have love for their wealth, as the as the following verse and among many verses show. It is the the second surah, uh, verse verse number one seventy seven. Similarly, uh, the surah number three, verse ninety two. Surah number 100, uh, 100 uh, verse number 8. Uh, these, source, uh, these verses show that the wealth is a trial and uh, in spite of love for it, you uh, need to spend to relatives, orphans, the needy, the traveler and those who ask for help and for freeing slaves so similarly, in other verses, it is uh, mentioned clearly that by no means shall you attain piety righteousness uh, unless you spend in Allah's cause of that which you love. So the love for wealth leads to accumulation of wealth, whereas the love for paradise leads apparently to reduction in wealth due to spending in the way of Allah. Therefore, giving in charity is one of the characteristics of a righteous person and an evidence that person remembers Allah. Similarly, the capitalist system emphasizes the time value of money, whereas the Quran focuses on time value of life, as clearly mentioned in Surah Asr. Money is just an instrument, a mean to make the life valuable in the hereafter by spending it in the way of Allah, as the many verses in the Quran show, like uh, Surah 63, uh, verses 9 to 11. <clears throat> so these verses clearly show how important it is to give in charity. Similarly, there are many verses in the Quran that emphasize the trial nature of wealth and significance of giving charity. For example, the verses in the Quran, uh, uh, Surah 64, verses 15 to 17, describe the nature of wealth as a trial and its accumulation due to one's own greed, though Allah promises to double the charity in terms of rewards or bounty. <clears throat> so the primary uh, objective of this uh, research or this paper is to provide evidence in a scientific way supporting the basic principle of Quran regarding the circulation of uh, wealth in a society. This uh, paper uh, was discusses the fundamental yet simple chronic principle of circulation of wealth, then links the principle to various economic teaching mentioned in the Quran supporting the principle. In this way, the study dem demonstrates as to how Quran establishes a holistic economic system with the objective to enhance social values and morality to protect society. The mainstream economic theories and models do not consider wealth distribution and, and poverty as major concerns and they have completely ignored values and morality. <clears throat> so now we uh, move to the problems that we want to solve. These are the major economic, social and environmental problems that uh, the humanity has been facing. Poverty in all forms, extreme inequality, hunger, environmental degradation, financial crises, moral backslide, fear, insecurity, oppression, conflicts and wars. So, <clears throat> There are many solutions offered in theory and practice. As a, remar a remarkable advancement in economic theory solved these problems, 
similarly tremendous economic growth did, uh, did uh, that uh, solve the problems has increase in human development solve these problems has the unprecedented growth in science and technology solve this problem but the answer unfortunately to all these question is big no so we are still facing uh, these problems now why uh, we uh, we did not could not solve this problem because uh, the failure of uh, economic theory and this is the evidence of this failure as mentioned in the astellen paradox <coughs> that uh, this is the evidence of failure and economic theory says that accumulation of capital or wealth leads to more satisfaction because our objective is to maximization of utility so we accumulate more capital to get higher level of satisfaction but the sterling paradox provides evidence against this theory now similarly uh, economics is mainly concerned with scarcity or shortage of resources all problems are due to scarcity of resources but this has been proved wrong by amartya sen's analysis of famines he showed that the problem was not due to unavailability of food but due to uh, the problem in distribution of food similarly the global financial crisis of 2007 and 8 also showed the failure of economic theories theories to predict this crisis and still failed to provide a a suitable justification or suitable explanation of that crisis now the united nation recognized this uh, failure and proposed 17 sdgs to be achieved it uh, by 2030 the un also recommend recommended or encourage localized solutions or methods to uh, solve or achieve these goals in today's presentation i am going to present the approach specifically for the muslim countries but this uh, can be applied to non muslim countries after some uh, minor modifications so in 2015 uh, the united nations recommended 17 sustainable development goals and aim to achieve them by 2030 These 17 SDGs with 169 targets have been agreed upon by all 193 United Nations member states. These goals have universality, integration and transformation. So all uh, these goals are accepted by these uh, countries and they are integrated. So if we solve some of the uh, goals or achieve some of the goals if they are because they are linked to other goals as well we also achieve other goals and this is uh, uh, the achievement of uh, the goals is from uh, the uh, the method which is called transformation so what is transformation transformation mean that uh, we transform or change from the present state to the desired state of sustainable development <clears throat> then how to transform uh, there are basically uh, two approaches one is the uh, uh, top down approach or the legal dimension or the enforcement mechanism and the second is the bottom up approach or the moral dimension Uh, or the encouragement uh, mechanism so these both approach, approaches are derived from quran quran mentions uh, these two approaches and laid down the principles uh, in terms of uh, legal requirement as well as uh, moral dimension so most of these surahs uh, in in makkan period they are Uh, related to 
the uh, encouragement and and uh, uh, moral dimension as we can say and but uh, with the establishment of uh, state in medina most of the sur uh, surahs in uh, uh, madni surahs uh, explain the legal requirements of uh, these uh, principles so <clears throat> we have the both approaches are important for the uh establishment or implementation of these principles of quran so real transformation is human transformation from a state of low values and morality to the state of high values and morality or more, uh, this is called may be called a moral transformation so these are the 17 sdgs so these are well known and uh, because of the shortage of time i will skip the these sdgs some of the sdgs include the major problem discussed earlier except uh, the <clears throat> moral dimension or moral backslide as well as wars and conflicts these are not covered in uh, sdgs so these are the <clears throat> basic principles that are derived from the quran the first four ensure trickle down of the resources from the rich to the to the poor <clears throat> and uh, and the next five stops reverse flow of or the trickle up of resources from the rich to the poor as indicated by the upward arrow <clears throat> now uh, the first principle which is a principle of uh, <clears throat> circulation of wealth that is uh, mentioned in surah al hashar verse number 7 so we will discuss it uh, later on but uh, just to mention that this is a very important and fundamental principle uh, for the circulation of wealth and for the policy making so um, we have these uh, nine principles and uh, now we will discuss one by one before that we will discuss the the chronic model of circulation of wealth briefly the chronic model of circulation of wealth ensured trickle down from the rich to the poor and similarly ensured no trickle up from the poor to the rich and similarly principle 2 and 3 these are the charity principle of charity ensures intergenerational transfer of wealth and principle 4 which is inheritance ensures intergenerational transfer of wealth and principle 5 to 9 is uh, stop reverse flow of wealth from have nots to haves all principles should be implemented from legal and moral dimension as i mentioned earlier now the first uh, uh, the fundamental principle or the major principle is the principle of circulation of wealth or resources which is derived from surah hashar verse number 7 <coughs> uh, which says that wealth should not circulate among the rich only kay la yakuna dulatan bayna al aghniya minkum so uh, this was clearly st state that the wealth should not circulate among the rich only this is the fundamental principle to protect the society however this principle can only be fully act uh, fully effective if the wealthy fear allah and obey allah and his messenger so this is the from the moral dimension but uh, we can still apply this uh, from the legal dimension the wisdom embodied in this principle of circulation of wealth has not been fully recognized by mainstream economic thinking the circular flow of income model as given in the economic 
uh, textbooks is concerned with the flow of income among the factors of production and various markets in an economy. This model completely ignores the wealth distribution and redistribution among all members of a society, whether they interact with the, with the markets or not. There is a need for ministry of economics to shift the focus from income distribution to wealth and asset distribution within the market and beyond the markets. So this principle can be applied as an evaluation tool to check whether a policy or institution has desired distributive effect on the society. <clears throat> so here, uh, the aim of all policies is to ensure that wealth should not circulate among the privileged class only because uh, and the, the historical evidence show that accumulation of wealth leads to concentration of power, that leads to misuse of resources, that in turn leads to financial and moral corruption, that leads to injustice, inequality and social unrest and deprivation. <clears throat> Now, if you look at the second principle, which is the principle of uh, charity, which is divided into obligatory charity, the zakah, and optional charity, the infaq fi sabilillah. It is derived from uh, these uh, many verses, one, one verse mentioned here. So, <clears throat> uh, this uh, uh, verse, which is uh, verse number 177 of Surah Al-Baqarah, this clearly links piety and charity. That uh, piety and charity are linked. Those who are more pious, al muttaqun are likely to give more charity. The reverse may or may not be true. The people who give more in charity are not necessarily more pious as defined in the above words. Giving charity is one of the characteristics of a pious person. The zakat is obligatory charity to be paid by the rich to the poor annually. Zakat not only helps the poor but also forces the idle assets and surplus wealth to productive use. In this way, the zakat has a dual effect on an economy, one on demand side and the other is on supply side, as mentioned here with the causal paths. At individual level, we see that demand side effect and also in the supply side effect and also from the perspective of the rich Allah multiplies and increases charities and it also helps the intergeneration inequality. At the collective level we can establish the work institution that generalizes the surplus wealth into socially productive uses. <clears throat> Now, if you look at the this principle of itam, which is uh, feeding the poor and urge others to feed the poor, this is derived from these two verses, and there are many other verses. Feeding the poor reduces or eliminates hunger, which is one of the goal of SDGs, and it also fosters brotherhood and cooperation. So we can establish the mechanism uh, that. Uh, uh, that ensure proper and free supply of food to the needy. Now the fourth is the principle of inherent inheritance that is derived from uh, these verses of the Quran. And uh, the these verses uh, explain in detail the division of inheritance in various scenarios. The above these three above three laws uh, ensure trickle down of wealth. The first uh, two ensure the intergenerational transfer of wealth, whereas the third law ensures intergenerational transfer of wealth, as mentioned earlier. So these laws encourage and ensure just distribution of wealth. The Quran mentioned rewards for spending wealth in the way of Allah for relatives and the needy at various places in the Quran. <clears throat> Now, uh, the 
very important principle is the principle of prohibition of riba it is derived from many verses in the quran <clears throat> so uh, the prohibition of riba stop the reverse flow of wealth from the poor to the rich and uh, it uh, it reduces inequality and fosters cooperation and sympathy similarly it promotes equity and reduces discrepancy between real and nominal sectors and reduces the chances of financial crises so it is a very important uh, principle that we should establish the <coughs> banking uh, system uh, uh, as an equity base rather than the debt base which is the current uh, mode of uh, of the system all banking system is the debt base to so we need to convert into equity based including the central bank <clears throat> so here uh, uh, the riba or uh, the alternative is uh, that uh, is the charity which means that uh, the surplus wealth uh, should be spent to be spent in the way of allah this is the perfect alternative of the useless or surplus wealth now the sixth is the principle of prohibition of hoarding <clears throat> so these are derived from many verses in the quran and uh, there should be uh, strict control and accountability for uh, those who hold the uh, surplus uh, resources so prohibition of hoarding releases surplus resources and that in turn benefit the society we will not go to the detail of all this principle because it is it will be mentioned in the paper because of the shortage of time i will just skip the detail now the seventh principle is the full or exact measurement <clears throat> so it is derived from these uh, uh, these uh, verses and uh, ex exact measurement uh, leads to the buyers uh, receiving their rights it reduces the exploitation and reduces the inflation as well as uh, from the seller's perspective seller receive blessing from allah because of the uh, the full measurement and weight and weight uh, and <clears throat> and that also uh, uh, improve or uh, expand his business now the eighth principle is the principle of uh, prohibition of gambling and uh, and uh, this is derived from many verses from the quran as mentioned here so prohibition of gambling and intoxication encourages the healthy activities and spares resources for the, the beneficial activities and reduces inequality and exploitation so it talks for the complete ban on gambling and intoxication in a country now the last principle is the moderation in spending were the principle of iqtisad which is very important and it is derived from these verses uh, it talks for uh, reducing the luxuries and uh, increasing necessities and uh, and the goods and services which are beneficial for the society at large or the for the collective benefit so the moderation in spending reduces the israf and tabzir are very important so there should be a uh, policy for the control of israf and the tabzir from the society and from the economy that religious surplus fund for the productive uses and charities and that uh, affect or reduces the feelings of deprivation and reduces inequality benefit the society 
and also it reduces the waste and reduces the pollution and positively affects the environment so <clears throat> this is a very important principle because uh, we are living in an age of a very high consumption so we need to reduce the consumption by uh, by appropriately designing the policies for the prohibition or decreasing the israf and tafsir from the society so in conclusion the chronic model of circulation of wealth establishes social and economic justice by bringing the behavioral change to the bottom up approach it would have profound impact on environment and uh, it create harmony and social cohesion it encourages brotherhood cooperation and sharing it promotes morality and ethical values so consequently the major economic social and environmental problem listed in the beginning will be reduced to a large extent if not completely vanished as a result most of the sdgs will be achieved with added advantage of restoring the moral fabric of the society and getting rid of conflicts and wars so thank you very much for listening me